Hi, everybody. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. On this Camper Report Show, we're going to be doing something that RVers love to do outside of eat, sit around a campfire, and maybe have a beverage or two. And that is going to flea markets. So when they travel all over the country, usually on Saturday and Sunday, there's a great flea market. We're going to one of the biggest ones in Stewart, Florida. It's the B&A flea market. We're going to take you through the whole place. How about you? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll stop on my way home. Yeah, time. exactly. <laughs> I've got an interview with Jose Moniz, the executive producer and creator of Our Being Today, which was formerly rolling on TV, rebranded after 12 years and some exciting information about where they're going and how they're growing. Great. Super. So those stories and everything else in the news from our friends at RV Business in Woodalls, Camp Crown Magazine. Right here, where, Bob? The Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. And welcome back to the Camper Report Show. My name is John DePietro. He's Bob Zagami. And uh, you know what? A lot of good news about camping. Well, there's a lot of news about camping. Let's start with the bad news first. And, you know, depending upon who you talk to, uh, fuel prices may impact people's opportunity to hit the road. What What are you hearing about that, Bob? Yeah, we're starting to see some weakening of the confidence of RVs, especially on some of the longer trips. I've seen a lot of posts this week of people that were going to travel three, four, five hours to get to a campground, spend the week there. And they said, no, we're not going to do it. A um, good friend of ours, uh, who shall remain nameless, but he did a post on his uh, personal account this week. And this is somebody who can afford the big rig. He's got a big fifth wheel. He's got a big truck, big diesel truck. He goes camping almost every weekend of every summer. He's the former state director of one of the states for Good Sam. And he posted and said, uh, in mild terms, what the hell? $115 a night for camping. And this was a campground that was bought by investors last year. Yep. And they immediately raised the prices. And it's up, up here in Massachusetts. And it's an okay campground. It's nothing spectacular. Mm. It's not a resort. $115. So he says, so for the weekend at the campground, it's going to cost him $265 for gas. It's going to cost him, no, the weekend camping is $265. The gas is $120. Food for the weekend is $185. And if you, anybody's been to a supermarket lately, you can't get out of there without spending $100. That's $570 yep. for a weekend camping with the family. That's that's going to start to impact people. And, you know, gas, you know, national average is $4.19, which is exactly what I paid here in Florida today. And what well, do you That's regular for? gas. It's regular that's, gas. $4.19. It's regular $4.19. gas. Diesel has hit the $6 mark in Massachusetts. Right, right. And you know what? It went it like regular gas went from 409 to 429 and overnight. Yep. Right around yeah. here. And you know what? It kind of differs from the conversations we were having with people at the campground show, at the, the camping show, the RV shows earlier in the year. They said, I'm going no matter what. So they're probably going, but they might not be making that long distance trip. Yeah. So yep. anyway, but you know what? They are making trips. And they can either make them virtually or they can either make them in person. And there's an event coming up called the RV Family Summit that our parent company, RV Life, is involved with that is virtually a college degree program for anybody who wants to learn about camping with the family. Full time. Full time. Full time. Yeah. Right. Full time or part time, but but primarily full time. But Bob, they've got and offer long trips for you to go out for six yep. or seven months. They might take you know extended time with them. Yep. But it's, it's an amazing educational event. And it's coming up next week. Yep. And I think it starts on May 9. It goes through the 13th, Monday through Friday. There's there. And we'll, we're going to put the link down below anyway. But there are several virtual seminars and but interestingly it's a hybrid event one i've never seen before there's three live events one in texas one in north carolina and one in california so no matter where you are in the united states <clears throat> there's one nearby the interesting aspect of this seminar is that all of the people that are the instructors 
are all people that are living what they're talking about. Well, I was looking at the contents of the the, the program itself, and they, they actually give you a workbook and they give you a checklist. But some of the things that they're covering is the dreaming aspect, the travel mission, the bucket list, the national park checklist, budgeting, travel budget, buying an RV, types of RVs, planning, packing list, domicile, mail call, mail services, licensing and voting, financial okay. affairs, year to glance, planning calendar, planning checklist. Yeah. What else? What else would you need to just hop in the rig and go? I think one of the cool ones is about how to convert a school bus into an RV. And there's one group there they call they call their bus schoolies. Schoolies, yeah. It's and, big. Um, yeah. You know, they might not be yellow anymore, but they were at one time. No, oh, and, and I, uh, you know, the other the other thing is a lot of them are doing the regular yellow type school buses, but some of our younger viewers may not remember that Bluebird, which was an outstanding yep. luxury motor coach for years, yep. had a school bus division. And they were built like tanks. And if you can find one of them, and I, I saw one the other day that somebody had converted, those, those are phenomenal for a school bus conversion. Yeah. And the interesting part about, um, I think, a lot of the demographics of, of who these people are, these are our, our parents probably in their mid to late 30s, early 40s, and several of them have two, three, or four children. And, um, you know, they talk about road schooling, they talk about homeschooling, they talk about all the alternatives to the traditional classroom that, you know, a family at home would be dealing with. But the kids seem to think that they get to their classroom comes to life when they talk about Mount Rushmore and the Grand Canyon. They don't just read about it. They they actually experience it. So I think I think one of the reasons why they may be even more successful than they thought this year. You talk to any parent, you talk to any school teacher, the mental and physical toll on children with the mask mandates, with the shutting down of schools has taken a big hit. Mental health officials are seriously concerned of the long-term effects for that. And there's gotta be a lot of families that are saying, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna homeschool them, but I'm gonna road school them. We're, yeah. we're gonna go on the road and we're gonna do it ourselves. And you know, we got all the guidelines and, and here's a program that gives you everything, everything. That you need. It everything you really need. is a roadmap. Right, it's all in one you know. place. And the other thing is, and not to not to take political sides, is another thing that's causing turmoil in the schools is parents are wondering, what are my kids being taught? So right. regardless of what side of the political spectrum you're from, there are some people that say we should teach this and some people say leave that at home. But when you have your kids at home and, you know, many of these parents are college graduated people that were many of them teachers themselves, teachers and professionals it uh, does present a viable alternative. Not that you have to do it for your whole life, but a lot of these people are two, yeah, three, four I, years I think, on the road. I think, it's gonna, I think it's gonna grow in the years ahead. And, and yeah. you're right, RV Life's uh, offering a special package for the RV Life Pro app that all of these people are gonna use while use. they're on the road to right. take care of their road trip. Right, yep. and one of the, the best parts is the virtual part is totally free. There, there are aspects of it that are totally free, and uh, there are other programs that are upgrades. So you'll look at it all on the uh, link that we have here and down below where you can click it. And it's the RV Family Summit. It's May 9 through 13, and it is on your computer or in North Carolina, Texas, or California. And with that being said, there was the third part about a big event coming up on June 11th. Bob, tell us what that big event is. Yeah, you know, uh, RBIA is in the industry. Go RVing has re rebranded the website. They've changed the logo and they're coming out with all new programs this year. And part of that program is National Go RVing Day, which we have not had before. Nope. But June is National Camping <laughs> Month. It's already National Camping Month. It's also Great Outdoors Month. So what better way to celebrate than tying that together with Go RVing? So on June 11th is going to be National Go RVing Day. And they have prepared and will go out next week to all the media people a toolkit that will have all of the social media 
uh, tags. They'll have uh, press release templates so that all the people associated with the industry can push this information down to the people. And they're encouraging people to, during that day, go out to a local dealer, make a reservation at a campground, purchase some aftermarket upgrades, do it on that, do it on that day. And, or, and we'll be publishing it in all of our channels. We'll, we'll certainly be talking about it again come June, but June's a big month for camping. Absolutely. Go RVing itself. Yep. So I know we begin our long trek all the way from Maine to Miami and um, we're looking forward to it. It's a great family event. So yep. those are the news stories of the week, courtesy of our friends. Where about RV Business and Woodall's Campground Magazine. And we'll be back with more of the Camp Report Show right after this. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. All right, welcome back everybody to the Camper Report Show. And my guest this morning is Jose Moniz. We refer to him as Joe, the executive producer and creator of RVing Today, but it wasn't always RVing Today. So Joe, tell him a little bit about yourself and what it was when you started it. Oh, well, yeah, and it, it's kind of a long and short story. I mean, we started rolling on TV back in 2010 and, uh, it, you know, ran that for up until January of this year. And uh, it was kind of a awakening thing for me watching our show on Nesson, which is a New England cable uh, sports network. And when the menu came up, I'm, I'm seeing this thing that says we're rolling on TV, you know, three, 11 o'clock, 1130. And I'm saying like, you know, Don, it says, you know, rolling on TV, I know what it is, but viewers looking at that have no idea what the heck rolling on TV is. So I started seriously thinking about, we, we better rebrand this. And, you know, and then, so that's what we came up with. My original show was boating today for 10 years. So I said, all right, we're going to do RVing today TV. And, <laughs> and that's how the quick change came about. Well, you know, this is the number one RV lifestyle show on television. Explain the broad um, expansion that you've had the last couple of years, because it truly is a national show and the numbers are staggering, but explain that whole process nationwide. Uh, it, it's actually a combination of hard work, but that most of it is uh, timing and luck. Uh, you know, getting onto TV stations is very difficult. I mean, anybody can buy their way onto a station. We don't do that. And, uh, but we've, you know, from the time we had the boat show, we always built good relationships with our stations. I mean, we had some that have been with us 10, 12 years. And uh, so we, you know, kept adding station after station after station. And, uh, you know, the partnership with these stations worked great. And then about um, a year or a half, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, uh, we had a call from Nexstar Media. And, you know, behooves to me, I, you know, we aired on one of their stations for a couple of years, and I wasn't even aware of that. And then they said that, you know, we like the show, you know, that's something we can use on our other stations. You know, I, I think part of that too, is you know, the growth of the popularity of RVing and camping and the COVID problem, I think that brought on some awareness, but you know, we, we went with next star media and uh, of course they got closer to, uh, or actually they have over 200 stations. And uh, so we've been putting stations on left and right with next star media. And that's where our major growth has come from in the last, uh, four or five months. Well, you know, what's interesting is you have spanned traditional television and you've integrated nicely in terms of your social media platforms and you have it on different venues. And oftentimes when we talk about social media and the new technologies, people associated with young adults, uh, you, you, you and I are not young adults, uh, but we do very <laughs> well in the, in the media business. So explain your integration and, and why television is still an important part of the consumer. You know, our show, this is a consumer show and people watch 
uh, programs on different mediums. Give us your take on that. I think the best way to explain that, Bob, is the fact that years ago, uh, I had a producer that actually produced a ski show up in Vermont every year. And uh, so myself, like, you know, I hate winter. I, I don't ski. I don't do any of those outdoor winter stuff. And uh, so I, I never really watched it. And then somebody said one day, oh, yeah, I don't watch it, you know, AJ show. So I tuned it in and sitting there watching it with my wife. And uh, they're showing, I think it was Killington, Vermont. Nice condos there, resorts with the jacuzzis and the tubs and the swimming pools and all of the restaurants. And I said, you know, how oh, I can do that. You know, uh, you know, I don't have to be skiing to do that. The, the point being that if I had not watched that on TV, I would never have considered about going up to that resort. So TV is something that, you know, online, you, you purposely punch something in if you want to watch something specifically. On TV, you can be relaxing at home and all of a sudden see something that wakens your, you know, wakens your alertness up right off and see like, wow, you know, I've got to check that out. So when you look at our numbers, like 20% of our viewing audience, according to Nielsen, is non RVers. So we have that audience sitting there and they're watching something on TV and maybe they would never consider that, but they're like, wow, you know, that looks like fun. That, that camping, that RVing looks like fun. So we're hitting this audience in a way that they did, you know, we purposely didn't go after them that way. I mean, they didn't punch up TV or being to watch us. They just happened to be watching the station and here we are, you know? So, yeah, I, I think that's one of the differences with television you can bring that awareness. I mean, it's like a meeting. I can go to your office and have a meeting. It becomes a business meeting. If I meet you on a golf course or at the restaurant for a drink, uh, it's more relaxed and you're going to pay attention to what's being said more than you would sitting in that office. So we feel the same way. You're watching our show on TV. You're relaxed. You're at home or you're even on your iPad sitting out on the patio. And it's just this branded type entertainment that we're getting across to you. Well, you know, it's, it's very interesting because I've known you since you first started the RV show and I'm, I'm not a boating guy, so I didn't see your boating shows, but your experience, and, and it drives you to, to constantly be changing the product. So not only you didn't just rebrand it with a new logo, but you changed up the formats. Tell us some of the things that you've done as we go into your, in the middle of the season right now, explain your season how you uh, film and, and edit in terms of producing X number of shows and then replays, but then talk about what you've changed in the show this year. I think, you know, you, you always have to stay at work. I mean, we've seen things come and go. And so, you know, when we started watching our show and looking back at it from when we started 10 years ago, I said, well, you know, that was kind of funny how we did that back then. So we've always had the format of being a, entertainment uh lifestyle type show almost like i call it they call it a news magazine type format so you're going to find three or four segments on our show uh all three or four segments may be different could be a destination could be a looking at an rv it could be a lot of things uh so when we started looking at various things that have changed over the years uh, for example uh the fact that you know like 60 some percent of people that go RVing take their pets with them so i mean uh, people are very connected to their pets like they are with their children. So, you know, we decided to try a segment on our show, which is called Pause on Board, and where we have Dr. Fitz come on and she does all of this stuff with the pets. I mean, how, you know, how to take care of your pets on the road, how to handle emergencies, uh, all, you know, safety for your pets. And it's become a popular segment. But it was like a trial and error thing. I said, all right, you know, that's popular. Let's do that. We're seeing this transition now from when we started doing a show, we would do visits to factories. People would say like, oh, show us the factories. When do we get a chance to visit these factories? You know, we'd like to see what they're like. Well, that's gone by the wayside. People now tell us like, show us places to go and things to do with our RVs. So we adapt to that and start showing up places to go and things to do with our RVs. You know, and the same thing with people doing, you know, new RV sales are big, but a lot of people are keeping their older RVs or buying used ones. And so we do a lot of things now with updating our RVs, things they can do themselves and things, you know, maybe they have to farm out. But 
you know, updating RV, customizing it. That's another big thing now. So it, it's just being aware and listening to what people are saying and asking. And uh, it makes, you know, we just build on that. I mean, occasionally on our social media, we'll have a uh, focus group. We'll bring on some of our viewers and, and find out what they're looking for, or what they like to see or what they don't like to see. And, and, uh, and, and, and we go from that. We start. Uh, and, and you listen, you listen to your audience and you adjust the program accordingly. Um, explain your your wide ranging TV. Net. How do how do people see rolling on TV when uh, not rolling on TV? Our being today, but yeah. So when when do they? Where do they find it? How can they view it in terms of both the commercial television aspect of it and the social media aspect of it? Okay, we're very we're, we're different with so many things, but unlike some other like. TV shows or RV shows, we don't air on one specific network. In other words, some shows you may find them on Discovery, and that's it. They air once a week on Discovery, and that's where you find them. Uh, we have, we're in over 100 television markets right now, and we're on ABC stations, CBS stations, Fox stations. So it what you do is, you know, on our website, we have we have finally to build it this way, but you go to our website, and it says where to watch. When you click on there, uh, it's two things. You can look at the stations and punch them up or you punch in your state and it'll tell you which station to watch us on at what time because all our stations air us at different times. So, I mean, I think right now we air like 35 times a week around the country and uh, some stations air us two or three times a week, especially the sports networks, you know, because it may be a rain out of a baseball game. So, hey, they got to put our being today up there and fill some spots. So, yeah, we air multiple times throughout the year. And I mean, if you know your own network, that's fine. You know where to find us. But if you don't, just go to our website, click on the where to watch, punch up your state, and it'll tell you which. And that's growing too. I mean, that's Michelle. You know, Michelle, who handles all of our stuff here, is you got her hands full because just this past week, we put on four stations last week, and she's updating the strobes. And then all of a sudden, in the last two days, we just added uh, four more stations. So it's a constant upgrade all the time. But yeah, it, uh, it, like I say, we're very different. In fact, we air on so many different networks. You certainly are on a roll. And uh, we appreciate our guest this morning has been Jose Moniz, executive producer and creator of RVing Today. So Joe, I want to thank you very much for coming on the air with us today. And we will list uh, the website, the social media. We'll do some post-processing graphics on it. And uh, I want to thank you very much for joining us on the Camper Report Show. Love, love being with you. All right, take care. Take care. I'm Jesse from Outsiders Calling, and I love adventurous family travel with my wife, Jenny, and our son, Tucker. For over three years, we've RV'd across the U.S. and Mexico, and it's tough to find places that meet all our needs. Now, we plan our trips with the RV Trip Wizard, pull it up in the RV Life app, select it, and go. It helps us discover amazing new places to grow together as a family. RV Trip Wizard with the RV Life app is an awesome trip planning combination. You can get both for one low annual price. Check out rvlife.com to learn more. Hey everybody, it's John DePietro. And you know what? RV season is heating up and people are looking for different and exciting places to go. And we are here in Stewart, Florida. We're talking to Mary Sue. Mary, we at Mary Sue. Where are we? Where are we at? Tell us where we're at. You are visiting the BA Flea Market in Stewart, Florida. And thank you so much for coming by. The BA has been here approximately 53 years. 53 years. 53 years. And uh, we're the oldest and largest flea market on the Treasure Coast. And here you're going to find all kinds of treasures. You're going to find that unexpected thing that. Uh, you never ever thought you'd have. And we have a lot of uh, uh, little neat home decor uh, shops. Tools, we have produce, records. we have hot tubs, we have mattresses. That's right, I saw the mattress department Oh over there. yeah, uh, hot tubs, one of the largest hot tub sto uh, stores in the area. Whatever you need, the b &A flea market is here and you can find it. Okay, so we're in a produce stand right now and the smell says fresh. 
that's the fresh strawberries and oranges that you only get in the state of Florida. Right. These haven't been uh, picked months ago and, and with stamped and shipped all over the place in plastic bags, right? No, you'll see the fresh corn over here was just picked today. Today, right there. Today. Wow. Okay. So, um, when people want to come here, where are they going to find the B&A? We're located right off of 95 on US 1 in Stewart. Um, it's actually 2885 Southeast Federal Highway okay. in Stewart. US 1. US 1. Okay. So it looks like, well, as we see the crowds behind us, today is a Saturday, right? Um, Saturdays and Sundays are your days? Saturday and Sunday, we're open rain or shine. We're open from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Where are people coming from? Do you ever do any surveys, look at the license plates in the parking lot? We have them from all every state coming down. And we have vendors that come from way down, even as far as Coconut Creek in Florida. Mm. And uh, But you'll see all everything, Jersey, New York, Indiana, you'll see all kinds of tags here. Everybody loves to come to the B&A flea market. And there we go, B&A flea market. See <laughs> if you can find something. I bet you there's nothing here that people would be looking for that they can't find here because we've just gone around before speaking with you and the variety of new stuff, vintage stuff, stuff that's just thrown in a bin that you, uh, you know, pick out 10 for a dollar. Seems like everything's here, Mary Sue. We have special events, too. We had a car show, a classic car show last Saturday. We had over 80 classic cars here. We'll have another one coming up at the end of March. So we have all kinds of special events as well at our market. And our friends that were here with us that lived in Stewart said this place has changed considerably in the past six months or so. We are under new ownership, and you're going to see a lot of new things happening. The new owner wants everything under cover. So when you come and shop the B&A flea market, uh, you're not out in the hot sun, you're undercover shopping. There we go. B&A flea market, folks. RVers, and there is RV parking. Yes, right? we'll always take care of the Ample RVs. RV parking, so don't feel as though you're... Uh, and we also have an RV lot if someone needs to rent for as much as a month. We have a secured RV parking lot. There we go. So, for the Camp Report Show, it's John DePietro in beautiful sunny Florida.